Hello everyone and welcome to another Blender Made Easy tutorial. Today I'll be showing you how to create this trebuchet animation in Blender using rigid bodies. If you want to follow along without having to create your own model, you can download this one, the link is in the description. There are four parts to any trebuchet. There is the counterweight, the projectile, the swing arm, and the sling. Basically, when the counterweight is released, it pulls the swing arm down, causing the sling to pull the projectile upwards, releasing at about a 45 degree angle for maximum height and velocity. So the physics behind trebuchets are actually pretty simple to recreate in Blender. So with that blend file opened up, we can see our model right here and we can see it just has a basic wood texture. If you want to move it around, you can select the empty and move all of the objects as at once, as you can see there. So the first thing that we need to do is select the swing arm and we're going to be adding the rigid body system to the swing arm and the counterweight first. So with it selected over in the physics panel, let's click on rigid body. Next, we'll select the counterweight. We'll click on rigid body as well. And now if we just restart our animation and play it, we can see it's not working at all. And the reason for this is because we need to use a system called rigid body constraints to lock the movement of these two objects. And in order to get this to work, we need another object to connect to. And for that object, we're going to be using this cylinder in the middle first. So with it selected, let's go over to the rigid body system. This time we're going to switch the type from active over to passive. This means that it's not going to move from this position. Now that we have this as a rigid body and the swing arm, let's connect these two together. So with the cylinder selected first, we'll hold shift and select the swing arm next. We're gonna go up to object, down to rigid body, and then select connect. This will automatically add an empty object. And this means that these two objects are connected. And you can see that in this menu right here. Right now, the type is set to fixed. That means that it's not gonna move. If we play our animation, you can see the swing arm is not moving at all. The one that we want to change it to is hinge because we want this to rotate along this direction like this. So with it selected, let's switch the type from fixed over to hinge. Now, another thing is the rotation of this hinge is based on the Z rotation of our empty. So right now, if we played this, it would actually rotate like this, which is not what we want. We want it to rotate like this. So what we need to do is select the empty, press R, then X and type 90 and enter. So now the Z is pointed in this direction. We then want to move this to the center. So right about there is pretty good. Now, if we play the animation, you can see this is working and it's rotating along that direction. So basically we need to do that same thing for the counterweight. Before we do that, I recommend saving your project because I've had many, many crashes while trying to recreate this. It seems like the rigid body system plus constraints and multiple constraints working together is pretty unstable. So make sure you're constantly saving your blend file just in case it crashes. We'll select the counterweight next and then we're gonna connect it to the swing arm. So with both of these objects selected, let's go up to object, rigid body, and then select connect. We'll select the empty and then again we're going to switch the type from fixed over to hinge and since it's along the z rotation we need to press r x and then 90 to rotate this so the z is pointed in this direction and then finally we'll go into front view and then we'll place it right about there now another important step here is we want to make sure that this empty is actually rotating with the swing arm and we can do that by parenting it. So with this selected, we'll hold shift, select the swing arm last, we'll press control P and then click on object. So now this is parented to this object here. If we then press the space bar to play it, we can see this is working exactly how it should. The next thing we wanna think about is the weight of the swing arm and the counterweight. If we select it, we can see the mass is the exact same as the swing arm here. We want this to be about 10 times heavier than the swing arm and the projectile combined. So what we'll do is we'll come over here and we'll go with a value of 65. Then for the swing arm, we'll select it and this time we'll go up to around a value of five. So now the counterweight weighs way more than the swing arm and we should get a lot more movement. As you can see there, that is working a lot better. And now we're gonna work on the projectile. How this is going to work is we're going to add a new object. Let's press shift A, add in a UV sphere. We'll go into the properties and we're going to set the dimensions of this sphere down to around 0.35 or so, just so it's pretty small, something like that. 
We'll go into top view and then place it right about here and drag it upwards. We want to make sure that this is connected to this UV sphere. And we can do that by again, adding another constraint. Let's make sure we press control A, apply the scale to this as well. So those scale numbers go back to one. Then over on the right side, we'll select rigid body. Then we'll connect these two together. So holding shift, I'm going to select the swing arm, go up to object, down to rigid body, and then click on connect. This is the connection point. We're gonna to wanna to make sure that this is actually in the correct position. We'll move it all the way over here to right about this position here. This is basically just like a little hook that the rope would go into. So something like that is good. And for this constraint, we're not gonna be using fixed, we're actually gonna be using generic spring. This will basically act like a rope between these two objects. What we want to do is come down here to the springs option, and then underneath the linear, we're going to enable the X, Y, and Z. The stiffness here controls how strong that spring is. So in order to get this to work, we're going to set the stiffness way higher. Let's go all the way up to around 2000 for each the X, Y, and Z. So now if we play our animation, we can see it is working a lot better, but there's a major problem. It's trying to go back to the position of the empty. So we need to parent this empty to the swing arm. So with it selected, we'll select the swing arm last, control P, and then click on object. Now let's play our animation, and that looks a lot better. That's more like a rope. The next step is we need to figure out when we want to release the projectile. And again, we want it to release about a 45 degree angle. So somewhere around here or so is the correct projectile angle, something like that. So on frame 24, we want to release this. And to do that, we can animate this constraint. We have an option to enable or disable this at any point with this animation keyframe. So what we'll do is on frame 23, we'll enable this and then on frame 24, we'll uncheck this and then click on this button on the side and that's going to add in another keyframe. Make sure you save your project again and then if we play our animation, we can see this is working perfectly and it's launching the projectile way over to the right side. Next up, let's figure out when we want the projectile to actually be released. And to do that, we'll be using this object here. We'll be animating the rotation of this so we can release the projectile whenever we want. And for this animation, I'm gonna go up to frame 20 or so. We'll hit K, add in a rotation keyframe. We'll go five frames later, rotate this out of the way, then hit K and add in another rotation keyframe. Over on the right side, we're going to enable rigid body. This time we'll switch the type from active over to passive and then turn on animated. So this actually takes into account the animation that we just made. The other important step is we wanna make sure the shape is set to mesh right here. So the hole in the middle is actually working properly. We'll select the board down here as well. We'll click on a rigid body. Same thing here, we'll switch it over to the passive so the ball does not fall through our objects. Save your project, then we'll restart. And now this should not move until frame 20 or so. The other problem though is we'll need to change the keyframe of our release point with our constraint. So we'll figure out the correct position by just moving these out of the way for now. We start and then we'll play it. And we can see right about frame 42 is the correct height. So we'll move these keyframes right about there at frame 42. And now this will work properly. So we'll restart once again, hit the space bar to play it. Our animation is looking really good so far, but there is another big problem that we have with our trebuchet. And that is this connection point, there's nothing there. If we go into the rendered view, we're not gonna see anything. It's just a blank empty void right there. So what we're gonna be doing is adding the claw simulation to connect these two points together. We'll restart the animation and I'll show you exactly how to do that. First, we need a new object. Let's press shift A, add in a plain object. We'll go into edit mode with this plane, and then we'll press M and then merge everything at the center. In the front view, we're gonna switch it over to the vertices select mode. We'll press A and then move this vertex right about there, right at the same position as our constraint. Then we'll press E to extrude and extrude it all the way over to the middle of our projectile right about there. And with the claw simulation, we need a lot more geometry on our object. So we'll press Control R, we'll add in about 150 loop cuts, left click and then right click to place them at the center. 
Make sure we move this to the center of our uh, animation as well. Right there is good. Over on the right side, we're going to enable the cloth simulation. So in order to connect the cloth simulation to the swing arm and the projectile, we're gonna be using some hook modifiers and a couple of vertex groups. Over in the object data panel, we're going to add in a new vertex group. We'll call this group main. And then we're gonna be adding another group. We'll hit the plus sign. We're gonna call this one hook. Select the main vertex group and we're gonna go into edit mode. We'll select the vertex on the far left side. We'll assign it. Then we'll select the vertex on the far right side and assign it as well. So now both of the vertices on the far ends are gonna have a weight of one, which we can use for the pin group. Select the hook vertex next and make sure that the only vertex that you have selected is the one on the right side and assign it with a weight of one. So with that done, we're gonna come over to the physics panel once again. We're going to come down here to the pin group and then add in that main pin group. Now this isn't gonna work immediately and that's because we need to do a couple of extra steps. First, we'll go into edit mode. We'll come over here to the right side, select that vertex, and we're going to add in a new hook object to that specific vertex. We'll do this by coming up to vertex, down to hooks, and then click on hook to new object. This added a new uh, empty, as you can see here, we can just scale it down a little bit, and then we're gonna parent it to the swing arm as well. So have it selected, hold shift, we'll select this object here, press control P, and then click on object. We need to do that exact same thing over on this side. We'll select our rope right here in edit mode. We'll select that vertex, go up to vertex, click on hooks, and then hook to new object. Once again, we'll scale this down a little bit and then parent it to the projectile. So with it selected, control P, and then click on object. Finally, in order to make this work properly, we need to go over to the modifier tab and we need to move the cloth modifier below the hook modifiers so it actually takes into account the hooks and the pin groups and everything that we just added. So now if we restart our simulation and play it, we can see this is working properly and it's flying, but it's still connected. So now we need to figure out how we can release this rope from this projectile right when it releases from the uh, constraint as well. Now you might think in order to achieve this is just to animate the strength of the hook modifier, but that's not gonna work. The reason for this is because if we were to just turn this all the way down to a value of zero, we can see it's stuck at this position. So if we were to animate the strength of that at around frame 42, the hook would actually snap back all the way to this position. So that's not gonna work. Instead, we need to animate the vertex group. We can do this by adding in a new modifier. We'll restart the animation. In the modifier tab, we're going to click on edit and then select vertex weight mix. Make sure this is above the cloth simulation. We're going to select the main vertex group. And then for the second one, we're going to select the hook vertex group. Remember the hook vertex group only has the right vertex on the far right side assigned to it. For the mix mode, we're going to select subtract. And then for the influence right here, this is what we're gonna be animating. Right now, if we play our animation, you're gonna see it just falls straight down because the influence is all the way at one. We want this to be at zero until frame 42. So we're gonna go up to frame 42 right here, click on the animation button on the side, go to the next frame, set the global influence all the way up to one, and then add in another keyframe. I wanted to come in here and explain why this is working a little bit more because I didn't do that in the video. Basically, when we added the main vertex group, we assigned the left side and the right side vertices to that main group. And then when we added the hook group, we only assigned the right side. So in the vertex weight mix modifier, we're adding both of those groups in the A and B slot, and then we're setting the mode to subtract. So the hook group is subtracting from the main group. With the influence at zero, that means there's no subtraction. So the left side and right side of our claw simulation are pinned. But when we set the influence all the way up to one, the subtraction happens and now the right side can flow freely, but the left side is still pinned. So that is what's happening in this modifier and why it works. And we can see it releases right at frame 42 and it flies all the way over. And now we have the rope just kind of flying about. One more thing that we're gonna be doing with our claw simulation is scrolling down to the shrinking factor because right now you can see it kind of falls into our other objects. I'm just gonna bring the shrinking factor up to 
this will tighten up the rope a little bit. So you can see there it's now a little bit tighter. And if you want it to be even more, I might go up to 1.5. It just shrinks the claw simulation a little bit so it makes the rope a lot tighter. Finally, back in the modifier tab, let's give the rope some thickness by adding in a generate and then we'll add in a skin modifier. Go into edit mode and then press A to select everything. If you press control A, you can scale this down until you get the appropriate size of a rope. And then also we'll add in a subdivision surface as well, just to smooth everything out. And finally, if you wanna add some collision for your trebuchet to fly into, just add in a plain object. We'll press Alt G, scale it up really, really big. We're gonna need a pretty big, large plane. We'll come over to the physics panel, enable rigid body. We'll switch the type to passive, just so it's a big flat ground. And now we need to figure out where our projectile lands. So we'll play our animation from the beginning and then right about here, this is where it lands. So let's place a wall of bricks right at this location. We'll restart the animation and press shift A. We'll add in a new cube object, scale it down a little bit and then scale it along the Y, something like that. Over on the right side, we're going to add in an array modifier. We'll set the factor of X to zero and then the Y to about 1.05. We'll bring it up to a value of five or so, maybe even six. Then what we can do is just press Shift D. We'll drag this upwards, move this along the X so it's about halfway up, something like that. And then we can select both of them, Shift D, move it up right about there. And then we can press Shift R a couple of times to repeat that action. And now we have a wall of bricks. We'll select everything. We'll press Control A and click on Visual Geometry to Mesh. And that's gonna apply all of the modifiers to our objects. Then we need to apply the rigid body system to this as well. First, we'll go into edit mode. We'll press P. And then we need to separate every single one of these objects by loose parts so they're all individual. Make sure you right click as well, set origin to geometry. And so the origins are in the middle of each of these objects. And then we'll add in the rigid body system. Over on the right side, we'll click on rigid body. We'll leave the type on active for the shape. We can switch it over to box. And another important step is I'm going to turn on deactivation and start deactivation. So this is not gonna move until the UV sphere flies into it and then crashes into it. So make sure both deactivation and start deactivation is enabled. Also make sure that the mass is a lot lower. Let's go with a value of about 0.1 or so so that the bricks do not weigh that much and the UV sphere will just make them fly everywhere. I think that'll look good. Then to copy all of these settings to the rest of the objects, let's go over to object down to rigid body and then click on copy from active. Now each of these should share that exact same uh, rigid body system. With that done, we are ready to bake this in. Let's come back over here. We'll go over to the scene panel underneath the rigid body world. We're gonna come down here and then we're gonna click on bake all dynamics. And this will bake in the claw simulation and all of our rigid body systems as well. And with that done, let's play our animation and make sure everything is working properly. And there we go. From here, you can add in an HDR, set up the camera and animate it following the trebuchet. And that is how you create a trebuchet animation in Blender. Thank you very much for watching. And if you created something cool, make sure to send it to me on Instagram at BlenderMadeEasy. If you have other suggestions for tutorials you'd like to see in the future, let me know in the comments down below. And if you're new, consider subscribing to see future uploads. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.